Hey guys, Sean here and so sorry for the delay in my review. I had issues in my car where the coolant light was on and I had to send it to two workshops, one after another just to check my car but that's a whole nother issue. But today, as promised, I want to bring you through the stock system of the 12.8 inch Tesla style screen and what you can expect from this unit. I'll go through every feature with you of this device and then I'll tell you some things I like and dislike and whether at the end of the day you should buy it or not. I'll go through mostly the features in landscape mode because that's just the best setting for this golf. Before I start this video, remember that bracket I was telling you guys about that it did not come with the device? Well, it actually did come with the screen, but it's just that when I was doing the unboxing, this actually slipped through, dropped here, and I didn't notice it until I got my car back after from the workshop and I found this. So it's all good actually. Sorry. So here is your homepage. I'll start from the top. Of course, you have your main dock up here which says all your main apps. On the top left corner, you have your off button which basically turns off the sound. And when you tap it again, it turns on. Next to it, you have your screen off and on button where you can off your screen if you don't want it displayed and you tap again, it will switch it on. And you have your three settings of brightness. Now, after that, you have your home button, you have your back button, and then here is your main navigation. You have your navigation, radio, car auto, music, movies, Bluetooth, Explorer, settings, app list, YouTube, file manager, and camera. Up on top, you have your time, and then here you have your Wi-Fi indicator, your USB, Bluetooth, and your recent apps, and your volume down and volume up. And of course, if you swipe down from the top, you have your Wi-Fi setting, your screen capture, more Android settings, your standard Android settings, and your power off button, which yeah, basically the switches the screen off. On the top left of the home screen, you have your date and time. You have your car position indicators, and you have your player display, um, altitude, and also a search bar that I believe connects to Chrome, I guess. You know what, let's try. See what happens. Okay, I actually don't know what that is about. Unfortunately, you can't change anything on your home display. I've tried it. I can't seem to figure out why you can't change anything, but so that's what you, uh, that's what it is. Um, you have your navigations, which you can set to your preferred uh, navigation you can set it to um, maps ways here I have it set on ways already then next you have your radio which you can of course manually uh, scan for radio channels and then you can set it accordingly and then there are also other features that you can key into it you can search for certain things you can go um, you can automatically search like that as well and then you have your different sound settings here and of course you can expand or contract the screen. If you contract the screen, you have this window right here that shows the compass and your car position again, time, and also I believe this connects to your camera, which currently it is not connected on mine. Next, you have your car auto that syncs to either uh, Android Auto or even Apple CarPlay. If you look here, yeah. It's already connecting to Android Auto, but I won't go into it because I don't like Android Auto. Next, you have your music. Again, they have a standard player which yeah, plays your music. You have your pause and play. Next, backtrack, repeat, shuffle. Your music list that basically you can browse through the different folders. You can have your SD card, you can have your USB, and your different music, sound settings. You can, of course, contract or expand the screen. And if you contract again, you have the same features on the right. After music, you have movies. So here I'm playing 180p movie file. The quality is really good, surprisingly. Um, you can, of course, expand or contract the screen again. You can have it play with the dock or without the dock. Uh, obviously, if you're gonna be watching movie in the car, which I do not suggest you guys to do that, uh, you will obviously want it on full screen. 
Then next you have Bluetooth. You can dial. Also, you can have your uh, phone book in it. Because you can play your music, which syncs with your player. Next, you have your Explorer. The default is Chrome. You can see here pretty smooth you have your settings as well in the different settings is where you can set your preferred app for the different uh, icons on the dock like you can see here for navigation i've already set it to ways app customization which is actually this uh, custom app button here that you can uh, connect with any of your apps that you prefer right now i have it on youtube your time you have your different languages dimmer i won't go into too much details but there's just just standard stuff you can set for the screen then you have your app list as you can see here these are all the apps i have file manager and finally you have cam which i do not have them connected to any of the uh, dash cams or reverse camera so that's why there is no display so yeah this is the stock interface for the 12.8 inch tesla style screen now coming to the things i dislike about this screen number one it's a shitty interface nothing on this home page is customizable you basically cannot change any of the widgets here i've tried it nothing works what you see is what you get you have your time here and your car position which i don't know for what reason i would need another clock when i already have a clock up here what and what if i don't want to see the, my car's position like do i why am i not given a choice to change and this player i mean now it's playing video but nothing works okay say if i'm playing some music and i go back yes i can change it here but again it's, it's very limited and i can't change the visual of this player and this just looks really really ugly and altitude like doesn't seem to work and why is there a search button down here i mean what what are you expecting me to search plus it doesn't work why do i get different dock icons and colors on portrait mode why also the home screen is a little bit different this time i get a compass and bluetooth answering yes and no why is there a different car design nothing on this interface seems to be standardized number two four gigs of ram is just sad honestly you cannot expect a butter smooth experience you cannot expect multi-app functionalities it's just good enough for one app at one time but even that some apps really don't work so well besides the very standardized app like um, waze youtube other apps do not work very well on this screen for example tiktok now it might not be optimized for a display like this but i would expect it to work at least a little bit more smoother because youtube seems fine but for some reason it does not do well with other apps google maps on this device is really slow whereas on the other hand way seems to be better like pulling up the keyboard or pulling down the the drop drop down the menu isn't a very nice experience it's noticeably slow and laggy that's close to 70 percent of the time when i'm using this screen it's just not a very good experience switching on the screen you can clearly see the apps being loaded if you have widgets it takes time for the app to load even though you have those apps in the background number three the reverse sensor indicator on the golf works the wrong way the objects that are nearer to you appears further away and the objects that are further away appears nearer to you on the sensor sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't the sensors are just weird number four what's with this window right here why is there these three options the only three options that you give me are again your car position with compass time and this feature which i don't know how to use like what firstly what is this for and I understand you want some multi-functional display that is totally acceptable but at least give me the option to change the features here 
Number five, not all the dog apps are customizable. I would really like if I could choose my own music player, my own movie player, my own Bluetooth settings, except for the navigation and this custom app button, everything else is not customizable. Number six, this Bluetooth setting here is really, really complicated. For some reason, I cannot get the standard Android Bluetooth setting. This is the only Bluetooth setting that you can use on this device. There are no other Bluetooth settings besides this here. So you have to use this interface for your Bluetooth setting. And I think it's just really complicated. Number seven. The app list drawer has this weird sorting that when you go into the app list drawer, you have a initial display and then it resets to a certain order by itself every single time. And I find myself always pressing the wrong app only because it sorts a second later. Number eight, there is a significant lag between the steering controls and what is actually happening on the screen. See? Down, click, down, click, down. So it gets really annoying at times because there are times where I just need the volume quickly up and it takes a while. See, I'm pressing it and it takes a while. And that's a lag apparently because of the canvas. I guess it doesn't really talk fast enough with the screen itself. Number nine, there are just so many different fonts in this interface. You have your clock here, which is honestly ugly to me. I wish I can remove this, but I can't. You have another set of fonts for your navigation dock and then come into this player, you have another set of uh, fonts. Why, why so many different sets of fonts? Why? In terms of things I like about this screen is number one, because it's an Android screen, you can totally customize the display. You can totally customize the launcher and give it your own personalization to the screen, which I will talk more in my next video about some of the things I've done to make this screen really look my own. The launcher that I chose to go with and some of the features that I've added to this screen. Number two, it has a wow factor. Everyone who comes into my car and sees the screen for the first time is just blown away by how big it is, firstly, and it's just so commanding in terms of how it looks. It, it looks beautiful and it's just fun to have in your car. It's a topic to talk about and it really modernizes your car. A screen this big right now are only in Teslas and now you can have it in your car. Yes, you might not have all the features and functionality of a real Tesla screen, but this is really your next best option. Number three, you'll never have shortages of USB ports. This screen alone gives you three USB ports. Two in the glove compartments and one behind the screen. Number four, this screen not only rotates, but it's also very adjustable to your desired location. Either at an angle or just moving it away, further away from the driver. And I also want to address some of the questions you guys have been commenting about the screen. Firstly, does it block the air condition vents? Yes. How much? Well, it really depends on your own sitting position. This is my viewing angle. As you can see, it doesn't really block the vents a lot. It's only taking up what, honestly, 10 to 20% at most, right? But for the passenger side, yes, it does take up a lot more, but you know, again, that is the sacrifice you have to accept, right? The only downside to it is, is really the controls right at the bottom here, which I do need to bend my head quite a bit. As you know, um, this button automatically turns off by itself. So every time I get in the car, I need to bend down and make sure I click the right button, which is a little bit of hassle to be honest, because I really need to bend down, but Again, that's the sacrifice you need to accept. And on the back, I'm just gonna show you how much space this screen protrudes out. Yeah, so it takes about more than three inches. So this is what you have to expect. Number two, does this screen block or disturb my left hand when I'm controlling the wheel? No. So this is a screen right now pushed all the way to the left side on landscape. So this is the maximum it can go. So in terms of uh, how much room you have between here, you have at its closest point, you have about two inches of space. 
So for my size of hand, I think it's fine. But I don't have the biggest of hands, so um, perhaps bigger hands might find this an issue. But for me, it's more than enough. And actually, I don't really push the screen all the way to the left. I put it about maybe an inch or so. Yeah, that's that's only because I don't want um, the aircon vents to block so much for the passenger side. So I push it slightly to the right. But for me, it's more than enough space. Yes, maybe you can, should push it a little bit more left. Yeah, but that's more than enough space for me. About my final thoughts about this screen. Yes, there are more dislikes than likes. However, I bought it with the total expectation for these things to happen. I knew with 4 gigs of RAM, it's going to be slow. I mean, look. Our phones has easily, easily twice as much RAM. So you're gonna you have to expect a slow experience. Sure, the refresh rate on the screen is probably really slow. It's not like 60, 60 hertz or anything. So you have to expect a lesser than ideal experience. However, those few likes balance out the dislikes. And that's because I think this screen looks beautiful. 12.8 inch isn't that big. <gasps> that's what she said. A lot of people are saying this screen is too big. I don't think it's too big. I think it is perfect. 12.8 inch is perfect. Anything smaller, it just looks 2019. 2020, everyone is going on full huge display screens in their car. Look at Tesla. Look at the latest Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Yes, those are in different categories altogether. I understand. Yes, I get it. But big screens in cars are the future. And if you want to have your car looking 2020, there is really no other option for you right now as far as I'm concerned in the market but to go for a screen that is this size. I've used it for close to um, a few weeks now, close to a month, and honestly, I've gotten used to it. I don't feel it's too big at all. If you're a passenger coming into the car for the first time, you go like, holy shit, this is overkill. But sitting in the car every day now, experiencing it, I don't see myself regretting buying this screen at all. Even for this size. Anything smaller just looks outdated i'm sorry to say it's the truth for anyone who's able to accept the setbacks that it is a slow display it's not very fast the experience of the screen is lackluster if you can accept all of those then i think this screen is for you those are the things that i could accept and that's why so far i think i have no regrets in in my decision to purchase this screen it's it's what I've always wanted. I wanted a big screen. I wanted my car to look modern again. And here it is right now, honestly looking modern today. And I come into my car every day just feeling awesome because it's just so, so, so nice to have this screen. So those are my final thoughts. Guys, it will be great if you can subscribe and follow me on my channel. In my next video, I'm going to talk more into the different settings and how I optimize this screen and also uh, some of the other features that I've added into this. So do catch my next video. Subscribe, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys again soon.